Have you ever read uh, Sinclair Lewis's Babbitt? Not in a long time. Do you remember the last line? I've never done a thing I wanted to in all my life. Quite a That's the man who never followed his bliss. Well, I heard that line. I was living in Brownsville when I was teaching at Sarah Lawrence. Before I was married, I used to be eating out in the restaurants of the town up for my lunch and dinners. And Thursday night was the maid's night off in Brownsville, so that all the families were out in the restaurants. And one fine evening, I was in my favorite restaurant there, it was a Greek restaurant, and uh, at the table was sitting a father, a mother, and a scrawny little boy, here, about 12 years old. And the father says to the boy, <clears throat> drink, your, uh, your, drink your tomato juice. Uh, and the boy says, I don't want to. And uh, the father, with a louder voice, says, drink your tomato juice. And the mother says, don't make him do what he doesn't want to do. The father looks at her and he says, he can't go through life doing what he wants to do. <laughs> said, if he does only what he wants to do, he'll be dead. Look at me. I've never done the thing I wanted to in all my life. I said, my God. Babbitt incarnate. Mm. And that's the man who never followed his bliss. Well, you may have a success in life, but then just think of it. What kind of life was it? What good is it? You've never done the thing you wanted to in all your life. What happens when you follow your bliss? You come to bliss. What was your rapture? Well, it started with Indians, and then it went on into more and more mythological matters and the realm of the arts music and uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the when I met Gene then the dance came in and um, this is uh, this is it just stay with that and one doesn't have to be um, a poet to do this carpenters do it a poet is Farmers. simply one who's made a profession and a lifestyle of uh, being in touch with that most people have to be concerned with other things uh, they get themselves uh, involved in uh, economic and other uh, activities or you're drafted into a war that isn't the one you're interested in and uh, how to, um, to hold to this um, umbilical you might say uh, in, in those circumstances that's a technique each one has to work out for himself somehow but uh, most people living in that realm of uh, what might be called uh, occasional concerns, uh, they all have the capacity that's waiting to be awakened to, to move to this other place. I know it. I've seen it happen in students. A uh, wonderful way of teaching we had at Sarah Lawrence, where I taught for 38 years, uh, would ha I'd have an individual conference with every one of my students at least once a fortnight for half an hour or so. And there you're talking on about the things that students ought to be reading, and suddenly you hit on something that the student really responds to. You can see the eyes open, the complexion changes, the life possibility has opened there. And all you can say to uh, yourself is, I hope this child hangs on to that, you know. They may or may not, but when they do, they've found a life right there in the room with you. How would you advise somebody to tap that spring of eternal life, that joy that is right there? Well, we're having experiences all the time which uh, uh, may, on occasion, render some sense of this, a little intuition of where your joy is. Grab it. No one can tell you what it's going to be. I mean, you've got to learn to recognize your own depths. Do you ever have this sense when you're following your bliss, as I have at moments, of being helped by hidden hands? All the time. It, it, it's miraculous. I even have a superstition that has grown on me as the result of invisible hands coming all the time. Namely, that if you do follow your bliss, you put yourself on a kind of track that has been there all the while waiting for you. And, uh, and the life that you ought to be living is the one you're living somehow. And uh, when you can see it, uh, you, you begin to deal with people who are in the field of your bliss. And they open w doors to you. I say, follow your bliss and don't be afraid. And doors will open where you didn't know they were going to be.